Hello my soccer universe, in round 15 of the Austrian Bundesliga in 23-24 LASK is facing, I've said first in English, WSG Tirol or in German WSG Tirol or in its full name in German Wattener Sportgemeinschaft Tirol. For this video I will probably um, use the name Wattens most because this is where the team is from. And it's a good time to talk about the team. A team that, uh, after doing some research, I actually could be considered as the original village team in the top flight. Uh, but there's a whole lot more to this history because um, it is very much tied to the family Langes Swarovski. Swarovski, of course, a well-known uh, company around the world, which originates from the city of Wattens. Uh, it is also a story that not only the family propped uh, the team up for, for a while, it's also used it as a springboard to actually bring top uh, class soccer to Tirol, but not necessarily to Wattens, but to the neighbors Innsbruck, where they had a few um, cooperations with. But as of late, it's also uh, the story of a tight knit team of president, manager, and coach having really, really good success in the league. Unfortunately, no one in Tirol outside of Wattens really likes them all that much. And that might mean that we won't have this team for much longer. But that we'll talk all about in this video. Now, the club goes back all the way to 1930 when it was founded for uh, the workers in the industry of Wattens. And Wattens basically is part of the conglomeration Innsbruck, Hall and uh, Wattens. Where Wattens is the industrial town, of course, there's a Swarovski company, but there's also paper mills and so on. And it was founded as a workers club. And curiously, the colors are green and white like another workers' club that actually uh, inspired them. That's, of course, Rapid Vienna from Vienna. They were the champions, and so uh, Wattens took on the green and white of the big team from Vienna. Uh, for most of the history, the team I would consider is at best a second, if not a third league team, but they have had successes which are very much, as I said, tied to the Swarovski company and the Swarovski family. Uh, when it comes to uh, honors, they are not that much. I mean, they won uh, the twice they were second division winners uh first time in 1968 when it was still regionalized they won the western uh, part of that and then uh, in 2019 they became the champions of a national second league so this means they had two stints in the bundesliga their biggest success is probably just by themselves that they finished in the top six in the uh 2021 season um however and we'll talk about that in his history. They're also part of four times Austrian champions because they had for a while a cooperation with Wacker Innsbruck. And that cooperation in the 70s yielded four Austrian titles and a few cup wins, although they are typically attributed to Wacker Innsbruck. Now, when it comes to the fan base, this is a, in a way a sticky point. Uh, First off, I mean, the team is very well rooted in the working uh, class, you know, in the industry of uh, the central Tyrolean town, Wattens, which is not a huge town per, per se. Uh, but because their stadium doesn't meet Bundesliga requirements, they have to go to Innsbruck. And Innsbruck is not supporting them at all. At the moment, if you have to play an away game in Innsbruck against Wattens, you might as well have a home home as well because support is not really there. Yes, if they're successful, there are more people show showing up. But if they have an average of 2000 people, that would actually be much. And this is the sad part of it. So in that sense, the biggest fans of this team that are currently really supporting is actually the family Lange Swarovski, where uh, the daughter of... Um, a big shot, Gernot Langes, now Diana Langes Swarovski, is the president together with their manager Kirk and with uh, Thomas Silberberger, a former Bundesliga player uh, from Tirol. They're all tightly knit two together 
guiding this club. Uh, Diana Lang is, of course, also using sometimes her connections, like with Juventus and so on, to get a few players to the club as well. Also, I asked me note that Diana Lang is uh, only one of two female presidents currently in Austrian Bundesliga, which is enriching for sure. And uh, she's actually. Uh, relatively young, but of course being a uh, part of a very successful family. Um, I mentioned a few times already the connections with Swarovski. Uh, when the team got promoted in 1819, and we'll talk, uh, which, which will uh, manage, they actually called themselves in Swarovski Tirol, but at the moment, due to COVID, uh, that name has gone because they needed to let go of uh, a lot of stuff, and so they said it's not quite right to sponsor a football team as well. Okay, I've hinted already a lot about the history and you know the history in the early years from 1930s in the war is all mostly lower league uh, football. It is just that in the um, early uh, 50s, mid, mid 50s, 60s, the team was then playing a regular in the second league and actually doing quite well there. The kicker came when Gernot Langes, uh, the head of Swarovski, took over and within a year the team actually got promoted. And this was the first true village team because Wattens at the time had only 6,000 people and this was a sensation that they got promoted to the big time. Not only promoted, they actually managed to stay a few seasons up there. Uh, they only got demoted again when they decided to make a cooperation with Wacker Innsbruck. As we said, a very successful cooperation where they saw, okay, what has some few interesting players, and you know, there are players like uh, Friedel Concilio, former Austrian national team goalie, uh, Hartenberger, and so on, really big names. They had them together with uh, Wacker Innsbruck, who also had big names. They got one of the best teams in Austria, and uh, uh, this um, Cop Cooperation Club was a dominant force in Austria in the 70s especially the mid-70s, if you would like to say. However, it didn't last, was not all that glorious, because uh, in the 80s, this uh, union actually got relegated, whereas the second team, which was still playing in Wattens, actually managed promotion up in the second league. And so by 1986, you know, with two teams floating around uh, around the same area, uh, this um, union was dissolved and Wattens was going by itself again and being relatively successful for quite a period, staying in the second league uh, for extended periods uh, with short stints in the third uh, league as well. Uh, so it was also in the early 2000s, they were back in the second league and they said, okay, we have again, you know, there was FC Tirol in Innsbruck, very successful three-time Austrian champions and they made a cooperation again. Again, the two uh, biggest teams of Tirol co-cooperating and this actually pull, uh, provided a safeguard for Tirol because when uh, FC Tirol completely had to be dissolved and dropped down, this secured them a spot in the third league and so Wacker Innsbruck actually made it back into the top flight relatively soon again. However, the cooperation which then became a union only lasted for a year. So Wattens had to go in the fourth tier and since then they're flying solo and actually managed to, uh, in 2016, Minai Gerhard Langes had stepped down, his stadium is named after him, gave it to his daughter managed to go up in the second league where they uh, first survived and then got promoted in 2018-19. And those promotion seasons actually was really, really a weird one because on a sporting level, they finished dead last in the league. However, Mattersburg imploded and so they could stay in. And while they would have finished last and probably should have gone down ag again, the next season became a huge success and they finished in the top six, which is uh, their best finish to date. And they followed up with two other good, good joints, finished seventh and eighth, respectively. Currently, the team is not doing as well. After these golden years, finishing six, seven, eight, at the moment, they're only in 11th place. And uh, you could make a case that they are among the weakest teams in the league. Uh, it also, many players needed to be let go, they could not be adequately replaced. And so, yeah, uh, this tight-knit leadership group actually has seen a little bit of friction as of late, although in typical matter, they are friends, they actually try to keep it together, but uh, you have seen some miss 
tones here and there. Also, has, as we said, after a rather rough start to the season, uh, Wattens has actually regenerated itself. Now, uh, Coach Silberberger said recently in an in, in, in interview, probably the biggest um, mistake that they made is that when they got promoted, that they renamed themselves not as a um, uh, works team from Wattens, but they said we are the Wattens team for Tyrol which made them from a village club into kind of the representative Tyrol. Of course, this was a little bit aside onto Wacker Innsbruck, because at the same time as Wacker Innsbruck got uh, relegated, Wattens got promoted. So a little bit of dig there, but that didn't work out. And then you have to play in Innsbruck, and that's why you don't also get the support. And this is the big sticky point. The stadium situation, because you don't have a home ground. And this is not, you cannot actually uh, sustain this. The club actually would like to build a stadium in Wattens. They would actually finance it themselves. The problem is they're not allowed to do so because they cannot extend, expand the uh, uh, existing one. And then there's all kinds of rules and regulations that prevent them from building a proper stadium. And that's why as long as this situation persists, um, there is not really a chance, I would say, that Wattens stay longer in the Bundesliga they are doing their best they're reaching they're reaching but it's obvious that this is a team that has kind of an expiration date in the current setup a new stadium would be desperately needed now when it comes to the rivalry with Lask cannot say much there is not really a rivalry the only thing I can say this is a team that like so many of these lower level Western teams. Lask have a really hard time, although this is Hartberg also, Lask have a really hard time uh, playing against them. Because uh, the one thing that uh, Wattens is, and especially under Coach Silberg, is doing really, really well, they can be a very, very solid on the, on the back and hit you on the count, counter again. This has been working time and time again. And so the overall record against Wattens is actually not that great, especially in the last few years and therefore it's kind of a nasty opponent in that sense other than that there have been uh, a few players that have been sent back and forth but you know given that this is a village club that is very much rooted in Tyrol and Tyrol is a good three hour drive away from Linz there is not much of a rivalry right there <music> Having said this, uh, the match though is again one of those you must win this one if you want to stay up there. You also, after Lask had a really good sec second window beating Salzburg, beating Sturm Graz, the loss against blau West Linz in the last game really, really, really still hurt. So there is a lot of makeup uh, obligation to, uh, to, to that. So I would expect a very similar game that we had already against Lustena, that we had already against Altach. I would expect a very sim similar game here that Wattens will try to keep it tight at the back. Uh, Lask will have trouble with that. They seemingly have worked work with that. And I guess a late goal might win it for Lask. Although against Wattens, especially in the first game, uh, it was one of the worst performances of the entire season. And maybe that might also work in Lask's favor here. So I hope you enjoyed this little insight into Wattens, a team that I have to, have, have to say is in many ways the original village club. It is the one that the booster for the teams from Innsbruck, but it's also a very well-run club that is unwanted because neither Innsbruck where they have to play nor in Wattens where they want to build a stadium, they are really well supported by uh, the powers there be. And that is actually a shame because I actually think that this leadership structure that uh, Wattens have is one of the most sympathetic in all of Austria, I gotta say as well. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!